Assembling and installing a billiards table in a customer's home is an important job. Our customer has made a significant investment in their new table and has every expectation that the installation will be handled carefully and professionally. We're counting on you to fulfill that expectation. This short video will help you gain the knowledge and skills you need to make every installation a success. When you unpack the table, you'll find that the legs are bolted to the cross beams on the cabinet box. If your table has transition plates, those will be packed inside the cabinet box as well. All the necessary hardware is packaged inside the rail boxes. You'll start by using a half inch socket to unfasten the legs from the cross beams. Then, with the cabinet still upside down, you'll position each leg and thread the provided washer and nut onto the leg bolt. Just hand tighten the nut for now. If the table has transition plates, you'll simply position those between the leg and the cabinet before you add the washer and nut. After the legs are in place, you're ready to flip the table. Now's the time to make sure you have the table positioned in the room according to your customer's instructions and that there's ample clearance around the table. Leveling the table is one of the most important steps in a good installation. Always use a good quality four foot level and check all around the perimeter of the magna board or slate pad. You're looking for the high spot on the table and you'll use shims to bring the other legs up level with that point. We recommend using 3 8 inch hardwood shims cut into 3 inch squares. They're sturdy and they're stackable in case you need to use more than one. The slate for the table comes in three pieces so it's easier to handle but it started out as a single piece at the quarry and before it's cut the quarry marks the slate usually with a half moon shape or a similar mark so you'll know how the pieces fit back together. You'll start with positioning the center piece, then slide the two end pieces into place. Then, using a 3 16 inch drill bit, drill into the slate pad through the holes in the slate. It's important to take a moment to clean away any sawdust that results from the drilling before you attach the slate. After all, you carefully leveled the frame and you want to protect the integrity of that leveling job. Then simply use the provided screws to secure the slate to the slate pad, pinching the slate and the pad together as you go. You've leveled the table, but you also need to level the slate. For this step, you'll start by laying your four foot level across the seams of the slate. Then tilt the level slightly and look carefully under it. If you can see light, that means the surface isn't 100% flat and you'll need to shim the slate. Small strips of cardboard, something about the thickness of a business card, make great shims for this part of the installation. So again, use your level to help you find where the slate needs to be raised, then back out the screws in the piece that needs the adjustment, and from under the table, insert your shims as necessary between the slate and the slate pad. Recheck with your level to make sure the surface is perfect, reset the screws, and you're ready to move on to fusing the seams. We recommend that you use beeswax for fusing the seams between the pieces of slate. You'll also need a torch, a large flathead screwdriver, and a single edge razor blade. Use the torch to heat the screwdriver tip and hold the beeswax on top of the heated tip as you pull it along the seam. The beeswax forms a bead along the seam as it melts. Then, simply use your single edge razor to remove the excess and you'll have created a perfectly smooth slate surface. During this part of the installation, you should also carefully check the slate for any small nicks. If you find one, use this same beeswax technique to repair it. This is also the right time to examine the pockets in the slate. The pockets should have a slight bevel. If you discover any sharp edges that could eventually cut through the cloth, use a small file or a bit of sandpaper to smooth them out. Okay, you've leveled your slate, you've fused your seams, you've checked the slate surface. Now just wipe the slate down with a clean damp rag and you're ready to install the cloth. Start by getting your cloth into position on the table. Most cloth manufacturers use a sticker to indicate which side of the cloth is the top or the playing surface. You'll need a long nose power stapler for this part of the installation. You're going to staple the cloth to the edge of the magna board or slate pad. 
Start on one end of the table and staple from the center, working your way out toward the pockets. As you go, stretch the excess cloth toward the pockets. When one end of the table is done, move to the other end. You want the cloth to be nice and tight, so give it a good sturdy pull as you staple. Again, start in the center and work your way toward the pockets, moving the excess material to the pockets as you go. Once you've completed both ends of the table, you'll use the same procedure to staple the cloth on the sides. Then, simply trim away the excess cloth with your razor blade so it won't show beneath the rails. Now you're ready to finish the pockets. Because you pulled the material toward the pockets as you stapled, you've got some loose material to work with. The technique here is to use your single edge razor blade to make finger-shaped cuts in the cloth. Cut down from the magna board, making approximately five slits per pocket. Next, pull the wrinkles out and use one staple per finger to secure the material to the bottom edge of the magna board. You'll finish the pocket using a pro-cut technique. Cut a length of cloth from the excess you trimmed earlier to match the pocket opening. Staple the piece into position on the pocket as you see here, then fold the material down to cover the staples. The rails will bolt to the table through pre-drilled holes in the slate. To expose those holes, locate them with your finger, then use your screwdriver to puncture the cloth and rotate the shaft of the screwdriver like this. Next, you're going to wrap the rails. The cloth is attached to the top of the rail with a flexible material called feather stripping that fits snugly into a channel in the rail. Start by cutting a length of feather stripping that matches the length of the rail. Because you're going to flip the cloth over the top of the feather stripping after it's in place, you start with the top side of the cloth facing down. Use your razor blade to cut the end of the feather stripping to match the angle on the pocket you're starting at. You'll notice that the stripping is smooth on two sides and ribbed on two sides. Make sure the smooth side is up as you install it. Use your thumb to get the strip started in the channel, then stretch the strip gently as you roll it into place with your laminate roller. When you reach the end of the rail, trim the excess strip with your razor, being very careful not to cut the cloth in the process. Now you'll need to trim away the excess cloth from the rail. Use the black patch at the end of the rail to guide your razor as you make a small cut in the material that reaches the back edge of the feather stripping you've installed. Then, tear away the material from that cut point. Next, simply run your blade along the edge of the feather stripping, pulling away the cloth as you go. Run your roller along the channel one more time and flip the cloth over onto the rail. The cloth is secured to the underside of the rail with staples, which go into a special channel on the rail. Working from the middle of the rail toward the ends, pull the cloth snugly and staple every inch or so. Make sure you keep the nose of your staple gun in the staple channel as you work and stop stapling when you're six inches from the end of the rail. Finishing the pocket openings involves a different technique for corner pockets and side pockets. We'll start with a corner. Anchor the material to the back side of the pocket near the pocket hole with a single staple. Then, working from the midpoint out, stretch the material as you secure it with more staples in the staple channel. With side pockets, the cloth gets folded. Again, start with anchoring the material with a single staple as shown. Then fold the material over like this and staple it on the bottom side. Make sure the cloth is completely smooth on top before you staple. You don't want any irregularities in this surface to cause inconsistencies in how the balls bounce for your customer. Finish stapling that final six inches you left earlier Trim the excess cloth with your razor and you're ready to move on to the next rail. Start by positioning the rails on top of the table so you can flip them into place after the pockets are installed. Remember, you're working with the rails upside down, so make sure you have the rail segments in the right positions. For corner pockets, you'll simply insert the pocket iron into the corresponding holes in the rails. The pocket is attached to the rail using a machine bolt and a star washer. 
As you tighten the bolt, squeeze the rail and the pocket together so you get a nice tight fit. On side pockets, use the same process, but bolt only one of the sides so you can flip the assembled rails in two U-shaped pieces. Before you flip the rails, you'll install the threaded rods into their rail holes. It's important that you screw the rods all the way into the holes. Next, flip the rails so that the threaded rods go into the appropriate holes around the perimeter of the table. Use a dome washer, dome side down, and a nut on each of the threaded rods. Just finger tightening for now. Before you tighten those nuts, take a careful look down the rail to make sure it's absolutely straight. You may want to use your four foot level for this step. Make any necessary adjustments in the rail position, then tighten the nuts with your socket wrench. Don't be shy about tightening down those rail bolts. You don't want them to move. Finally, the pocket tabs get secured to the underside of the table with staples. Great job. Your table installation is complete and it looks terrific. Before you leave, take a few minutes to talk with your customer. Thank him or her again for their purchase and ask if there's any questions you can answer. Suggest the use of a high quality furniture polish on the wood surfaces of the table. Explain why the cloth should be brushed with the special brush provided with the table, never vacuumed with a hand vac or other appliance. Now you might also tell your customer that over time the rail bolts may loosen slightly and show how easy it is to tighten them using a socket wrench. Remember, you're representing our entire company when you're installing one of our tables. We're counting on you to be careful, be thorough, and be professional.